when Jordan had me on his show, he did this paywall section that they do at the end, and he was asking me about my background and whatever. And I talked, uh, we talked about when I was homeless. In the secret set. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we talked about when I was sleeping in the park, and I, and I told the story about um, <clears throat> I used to smoke back then. And uh, I was just, I had nothing to do all day because that's what, that's what it is to be homeless and, and not to have a job at that time, etc. I was just walking around. And this guy was waiting for a bus and he lit a cigarette. And I was like, oh, fucking hell. And the bus came. So he got upset, dropped the cigarette. And I remember picking that cigarette up. And in that moment, it was the lowest that I've ever felt, ever. And that was the moment I decided I'd never, I'd never be there again. Mm. I'm never coming back here. And he was like, that's right. When you want to do things in your life, it's helpful to know the heaven that you're going to, but it's also very useful to have a hell behind you that you're moving away from. And that's what you're talking about. This is why it's, I think that's such a great reframe because the, the alternative to going for it and trying things and doing your best and actually attempting to achieve the thing you, you, you're meant to achieve, and I really believe in, in, in that sense of destiny in a way, is not comfort and sort of everything's all right. It's fucking terrible. Mm. And that, that is a great reframe, man. I love that. Yeah, I, you know, Dana White said, uh, this, I, I fucking love that guy. I know Me that we're too, both, man. We're both oh, big, oh, we're both yeah. big fans oh, yeah. of him. Dana, we're coming for you. <laughs> um, he had this really great reel that someone repurposed that said, um, I, I think he's got sons. Uh, he has. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I tell my sons, it's all out there for the taking right now. If you have a gram of talent and an ounce of hard work, you'll run these pussies over. And it's like, it's true. Like th there is, the, the bar has never been set lower. And I understand, you know, if you wallow in Reddit and the dark recesses of Twitter, that you can believe that you are a genetic dead end as a man and there is nothing that you can do. Or as a woman, that the culture is, you're at the, kind of at the mercy of the culture in a way. And you maybe feel like you missed a time of glory or that was more appropriate for you. Maybe it was the, the 1950s or maybe it was the fucking middle ages. I don't know, right? You feel wistful for a life that you never got to lead. Mm. But the, the truthful fact is, I don't think there's ever been a time where there's been more opportunity and a lower degree of competition. Agreed. Like we've just said, the average American, that's the average American, yeah. right? Yeah. Obese, less than 1K in the bank and divorced, right? Like just, it, it's so low. And I, I understand that it can seem like you're talking from an ivory tower of, oh, well done, you had this sorted. But I didn't have it sorted. I didn't have it sorted None for a very long time. None of us did. You know, I, I, I had days where getting one foot out of my bed onto the floor was a task so great that I couldn't do it. Right, that I just couldn't bear to open the curtains, I couldn't bear to speak to anybody, and ostensibly outside, I had the entire life sorted. Okay, so what does that tell you? It tells you that material condi conditions don't actually always determine your internal state. So don't presume that the things that you're chasing for are actually going to fix whatever your internal problem is. And also don't use your external state as an excuse for the way that your internal feelings are. That's not to say that you can't get to a state of destitution where it's pretty much impossible to be happy. Yeah. But